In this video, I develop an almost certain craving for onion rings. And for Tang. I also play King Midas. And make questionable choices. Look, what a... Well, hello guys, and welcome to the laboratory. I've got a lot going on here, and we'll get into that in a minute. But what we're doing, I was sent a uh, Rochester Quadrajet from an 86 GMC by a subscriber, a good guy back in the old country, you know, Pennsylvania. And so I've got set up to zinc plate parts and to put yellow chromate on parts. Um, I'm going to bring you in closer to show you what I'm doing, but I want you to understand this is not a how-to video. Um, there are a lot of how-to videos on how to use these products with guys that have very good, very professional, permanent setup. Um, at the moment, I don't have the room. I'm going to get there, but... Um, so this is more or less temporary and then all these buckets will go into storage somewhere and I'll get them back out when I need them. So, you know, just, just come along with me. This is just to show you the process of how I'm refinishing this carburetor. This is a Rochester Quadrajet off of an 86 GMC, so the end of the carburetor era. and. That is why I've already taken it apart. We are going to re-cad, replate the cad, the yellow cad on it. Um, I've got all the parts I wanted to polish in my little Eastwood vibrating tumbler. So that is where we'll begin. We'll get all those out and we will move on to the rest of it. This is a polishing compound that I got with the machine years ago. Also got these ceramic little, I don't know, they look like pyramids, frankly. Um, I usually use these wet with uh, simple green or something like that. That works excellent for cleaning old rusty bolts up and stuff. All of these parts I already had soaking in pine saw along with the rest of the carburetor, if you haven't watched that. That really cleaned them up, but I wanted to give them a bit of a polish. So I ran these overnight. It seems to have done an excellent job, of course. All the brass was completely tarnished. You can see how beautiful that comes out. There's one of my metering rods. Looks brand new. Here's just another shot of how a lot of these things came out of the tumbler. Just absolutely beautiful. The brass pieces, metering rods, power piston. I mean, these things are just the jets. Just looking good. So I'm going to be using Caswell's Black Oxide Concentrate. That gets a nine parts water. to one part concentrate. And you can store this stuff, you use a little bit, throw it in the container, it gets milky, but it still works. And after a while you will notice it takes longer and longer for the, uh, the hardware to turn black. And then eventually you'll get tired of waiting so long and you will mix new stuff. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to use new so you could actually see what was going on. Just gonna throw those in. You can tell they're already turning black in there. Alright, these things are looking pretty good, so I'm going to call it quits there. Drain this stuff off and save it for another day. Rinse it with water.
Now I need to get them all nice and dry. And this is what we're looking like at this point. Looking pretty good. Now we want to give them a coating of oil. Encapsulate, encapsulate them in a preservative. I find penetrating oil just incredibly handy. Um, you can use, you can dip them or wash them in motor oil, whatever you want to do. But that's what we look like. Got a nice shine to them. Ready to go back in. Alrighty then, now I am going to dip our main parts of our carburetor into a yellow chromate solution from Caswell. Um, now the normal procedure for media blasting a carburetor is typically glass bead or possibly soda, um, neither of which I have. Um, I blasted it with my tried and true fine coal slag. Now when I look up online the hardness and the abrasiveness of coal slag um, it doesn't give me different grits but it does basically coal slag and glass bead have basically the same hardness and the same um, abrasiveness. Uh, the only difference I can see is that coal is an angular piece. Uh, whatever you want to call it, and glass bead tends to be round. Um, so whether or not that's going to have a negative effect on our carburetor is what I want to tell, and I also want to tell I mixed the, the weaker uh, ratio of yellow chromate and water, and I want to see how that looks. So I have this old junk Carter carburetor. I believe this came off an old... AMC uh, Gremlin that someone gave my oldest brother years ago. My only memory is riding home in it once. I think that was the only trip it ever made in our family. And then it sat there and I pretty much got asphyxiated sitting in the back seat because the exhaust was so bad. But anyway, um, yeah, just a piece of junk carburetor. Don't even have the whole thing. And I'm just going to dip the very end of the bowl in here and uh, do that for a little bit rinse it off and we'll see what we got Alright, I've ended up leaving it in there a bit longer than I said I was going to. Rinse this off. Yeah, that's the color I want though. So probably what I'll end up doing, that was about a minute rather than 10 seconds. Um, I think when you're re replating a part, a steel part with zinc, and then you dip it in the yellow chromate, um, it's just immediate reaction. That zinc just really changes a beautiful color, and we'll get to that on the steel parts here in a bit. Um, but on these old pop metal parts, aluminum parts, whatever, um, apparently it just takes a little bit more to turn the desired effect, but that is exactly the color, um, the color and the shade and the look I'm going for on the body. That's what they would have looked like uh, from the factory. So I'll check this out when when uh, 
it dries. See how that looks. But uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to be happy with that. So we will try doing that on our quadrajet now. Okay, I've had our air horn in the degreaser. Got to rinse that off. I definitely need to get a better setup here. But that'll all come in time. Now I want to do the the bull body and the air horn exactly the same amount of time. Whoops. Don't get ahead of myself here. I think I'll go for two minutes. Shouldn't have touched it. Here, when I put the air horn on the, the body itself, you can see the obvious difference. How much color has changed on that. I think that'll look pretty good, especially considering when we add the steel parts where it'll be that nice golden color, that iridescent gold. So I'm going to do the this piece now, and then that'll be it for this part. Um, you may notice, those of you that know about this product, I'm not using a heater in the chromate. It actually already is 80 degrees. That's the ambient temperature in the shop right now. So got a nice warm day I'm doing this on, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to degrease this, throw this in the chromate, rinse it off, and we'll take a look at that. So the process I'm going to be doing, first of all, we need to apply zinc to all the steel products and then we will change the color of the zinc with our yellow chromate. Now you can get blue, black, yellow, olive drab, um, all different colors of chromates, um, you know, and professional manufacturing does it in many other colors as well, green, red, so forth. So. Um, Starting here with the old deep fryer, I've got degreaser going on. They want that nice and hot, and that was the easiest way I could think of to get that degreaser nice and hot. Then a rinse. Then we have a 5% muriatic acid bath. Another rinse. Then we have our copycat and zinc plating bucket. Um, that is a registered trademark of Caswell where I got all these products and you can go to their website check them out they have tutorial tutorials videos everything you need they send you a nice big manual whatever then we have our yellow chromate or the tang and then another rinse bucket now I wanted to test this process out make sure I had everything set up correctly um, this is a clamp, a hold down clamp for the modulator um, for my 86 GMC project. And if you are a longtime subscriber and viewer, you know what I'm talking about there. I've started going through the transmission on that and thought I'd bring this home and try out doing some yellow chromate and uh, CAD plating on 
the hold down clamp. So that's looking really good. Absolutely all I did to prepare this part was sand, uh, media blast it, wire wheel it, and then I started the plating process. And how it comes out in the end entirely depends on your preparation, obviously, like any other thing. So you could sit here and really buff and polish this thing if you wanted a perfectly smooth finish. But for a modulator clamp, I really don't think that's bad at all. You can see the nice iridescent blues, reds, and golds in there. Just like the factory made it. I'm going to start with my two most questionable choices and that is my idle stop solenoid and my vacuum brake. We will degrease those for about 8-10 minutes. No. We will degrease those for 5 minutes and then we will move on. Okay, cut my power supply here. You can see our part. How shiny it is. Don't know why that looks a little cloudy, but it does. We're going to test it. I'm going to rinse it off. This bucket here. I'm going to do three second dip in the acid again. Just to etch it and we're gonna rinse that off. Now into our tang. Well, cotton picking. Let my wire come off. Looking pretty good, I think. So I'm going to let that drain out a little, and I'm going to put it in the rinse tank and redo my wire. All right, I'm getting close to being done. I was going to show you one process that I'm doing a little bit differently. And, well, I'm doing it the same, but I'm excluding the yellow chromate. And that's on the springs. Um, I'm going to do them very, a very short duration here because I don't want it built up a lot, obviously. But we're just going to put some zinc on them, make them shiny again. Okay, now I really need to avoid touching all the, the yellow chromate parts for a day. Let everything dry out really well before we touch anything. Um, but I wanted to give you a good idea of all the different finishes we have going on for this one carburetor build. As for the main body of the carburetor itself, um, that is just a lovely matte grayish green color. Very pale. Um, and I think that's very close, about as close as I'm going to get to what I see original carburetors that have not been stripped or rebuilt um, or cleaned up. If you get online and you say you go to eBay and you look for original Quadrajet from the 80s, that's what the body is going to look like. These parts I haven't done anything to. These are, uh, or other than clean them up, 
Um, this reminds me of the green chromate, what they used to call it. They still do, I imagine, when if you're building World War II airplane models. Um, the interior of the cockpit and so forth, that's what that color reminds me of. Just cleaned and brushed the choke housing, give it a nice shiny brushed aluminum look. That ought to look pretty good. Of course our black oxide hardware. Um, you can also buy black chromate for the process we just did and that looks really good on the videos I've seen where it's been used. That really gets it nice and black. This is definitely going to be the less expensive route if you want black hardware. Um, so that is cool. And then we got our yellow chromate parts. Just going to really shine against that body of the carburetor. Get our little idle stop solenoid there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's getting a little toasty in here. Well, there we go, guys. Um, I'm going to call it quits on that project. I, like I said, I need to let everything dry out for at least a day, and then we can start putting the old carburetor back together. You're going to have to join me on the next video after this, I suppose, for doing that. Um, big thumbs up to Caswell. They made a product here that is so uh, consumer friendly, let's say. I mean, it's, it's an investment and all the supplies and hardware and things you need, it, it's an investment. But to be able to do all this yourself at home, that's, that's pretty cool. So, and it, it looks great. So I hope you got a little bit of entertainment and enjoyment out of that. Um, like I said, not a technical how-to video, just bringing you along for the ride like I do everything else um, of what I'm doing. And when I, when I got to the rebuild video, I wanted to show you, you know, I went from a dirty old carburetor to a brand new looking carburetor. And I wanted to bring you along for how I got to that point, you know. So yeah, be looking for the rebuild video coming up after this one, and so much more. Got the rear seat almost together on the 48 Chevy, and that thing's, it's looking pretty good, guys. So be sure to be watching for that. I have a whole lot to clean up. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Shortcut, my dear. George, watch it! Sure fire, honey lamb! George! Train, George! Train! Stop! So help me, I'm warning you, George! Hey, these folks need a lift! George, I'm getting out the shotgun!